so under module 3 we'll start with first topic that is bandwidth utilization okay so in bandwidth utilization we are going to discuss the topics that is multiplexing and spread spectrum so let's start with the first one that is multiplexing so before discussing what is multiplexing and why it is required first we'll see the definition of bandwidth so this definition is already discussed in the previous classes right so what is bandwidth it is maximum amount of data that can be transmitted over the internet connection in a given amount of time right so we have seen bandwidth is represented or expressed in the form of bits per second right uh, so mbps right so and uh, it is also expressed in in the form of hertz right so with this basic background information we will see why the multiplexing is required okay so uh, let me consider this example see i have a internet connection have a internet connection and uh, I'm, i'm using this internet connection uh, i mean i'm uh, many devices are connected to this internet connection that is my cell phone laptop tv and uh, another mobile okay all these devices are connected to this internet now uh, when i say uh, this hathway connection only one link is available right the, uh, the transmission link only one link is available so this link need to be shared between all the devices that are connected to this internet right my tv uh, cell phone laptop uh, and uh, another mobile as i said okay all these devices will be using internet right so uh, so in that case whatever the bandwidth available for this for this link need to be shared with all the devices right so whatever the devices connected to the internet the bandwidth of that link need to be shared with all these devices isn't it because only one link is available uh, using which i i need to uh, what uh, access the internet say i may be using whatsapp or i may be sending mail or browsing something in the google and, uh, and in uh, with respect to tv it is connected to the internet Uh, where i i may be playing youtube right netflix or amazon isn't it so all these devices when connected to the network i mean internet the link which is connected to the network okay so the bandwidth has to be shared between all the devices here okay so uh, uh, where in that case what you can see all this when all these devices generate the data it has to be passed over this link and it ha and then the data has to be delivered to the receiver end right so uh, you can say that consider this example see here n input lines are there consider uh, multiple devices are connected to the internet and i am passing that uh, i mean data at the, uh, generated at these devices are passed over this link and then delivered at the receiver end okay so all the devices has to share this link that is bandwidth uh, assigned for this link right so so this bandwidth need to be shared with all the devices that is connected to the link so to provide this feature to provide this provision we go for multiplexing okay because all this data has to be passed over only one link here so this uh, to do this uh, task we follow a method called multiplexing okay i hope you understood why multiplexing is required in uh, the aim, aim of this multiplexing is that uh, to make use of or to share the available resource uh, between multiple devices as i said link is a resource here i mean link is a resource right so this link need to be shared with multiple devices okay that is the main objective of this task and 
uh, example you can see uh, telephone lines or uh, telephone calls see when we had a uh, landline i mean uh, landline for the communication purpose say between uh, i want to communicate to the friend who is located in a mysore i mean during old days i'm talking about so uh, they the only one link is uh, or established between bangalore to mysore okay at bangalore many users will make a call to the to the friends who are residing in who are residing in mysore okay so all these devices or the all the users of this telephone network okay the all these uh, when they make a call to their friends who are located in the mysore uh, they their calls will be uh, what multiplexed okay and then passed on to the link that is established between bangalore and mysore and then delivered at the receiver end that is to the mysore okay this is a simple example i'm talking about okay so to do the task we use a method called multiplexing so now what is multiplexing as it says it is set of techniques that allows simultaneously transmission of multiple signals across single data lake so all together is called as multi multiplexing so multiplexing what it is it is the set of techniques that allows simultaneously transmission of multiple signals across a single data link okay i hope this is clear now my, about multiplexing okay so this diagram says uh, see the lines at the left side okay here a, n input lines are there right this input lines or you can say uh, transmission streams are fed to the multiplexer okay so this is multiplexer or you can say uh, mux okay so this multiplexer will combine all these uh, uh, what uh, data stream into single stream okay and uh, passed on to the pa passed over this link and then delivered at the receiver end okay so you can see here at the sender side there is multiplexer at the receiver side there is demultiplexer so once this uh, what this data is delivered at the receiver end where the demultiplexer is there okay which this will separates the stream back to into i mean uh, it will convert or you can say it separates the stream into uh, its component Uh, transmission that means here how many uh, lines are there it has to be converted to the uh, same number of lines at the output uh, side or the receiver side here what happens at the multiplexer many to one uh, happens right combining multiple lines into single stream here converting single streams in single stream into multiple signal right so that Uh, is done with the help of demultiplexer so this is uh, the working of multiplexing technique here you can see i have written one link and n channels right here what link refers the physical path there is only one link and data flows from the this direction i mean from here to here in this direction okay only one link is established and this is link is nothing but the physical path then i have written there are n channels that is all the input lines are uh, combined and form a, uh, a single stream right so for each input line we form a channels okay so this channel is what it refers to the portion of the link that carries transmission between a given pair of lines say uh, i let's consider this example where uh, i'm using whatsapp okay and uh, using my cell phone and using my uh, television i'm uh, playing some music in youtube okay so consider this is uh, multiplexed and passed over this link okay so now when i send uh, a message uh, whatsapp message to my friend it has to be delivered to the send right so sending message 
as well as uh, playing music uh, songs in the youtube everything will share this bandwidth of this link okay so that is a channel refers to the portion of the link that carries transmission between a given pair of lines okay so as you can see here for this one link there are n channels okay i hope uh, this part is clear so i just summarize multiplexing is a set of techniques why it is called a set of techniques because multiplexer is involved demultiplexer in, is involved okay this is one technique this is one technique okay so multiplexing is a set of techniques that allows simultaneously transmission of multiple signal across a single data link okay so that is about the introduction of multiplexing so let's see example where uh, multiple signal share one medium as i consider the what uh, i connected many devices to have a network no that is what uh, is being discussed in general okay so if there are multiple signals to share one medium then the medium must be divided in such a way that each signal is given some portion of the available bandwidth as i said right so let's consider example if there are 10 signals say 10 devices wants to access the internet okay and bandwidth of the medium is 100 units say uh, whatever the internet i'm using this uh, bandwidth is 100 mbps okay so this 100 mbps need to be shared with all the 10 devices so in that case approximately each signal or each device may get 10 unit or 10 mbps of uh, bandwidth uh, to access the internet okay so this is one example now uh, to perform this multiplexing uh, we follow different methods so this multiplexing the categories under multiplexing is frequency division multiplexing wavelength division multiplexing and time division multiplexing so these are the uh, pro, uh, methods or the techniques followed to perform multiplexing as you can see in this diagram frequency and the wavelength are used for analog signal please do remember these two methods or the techniques used uh, for analog signal so this can be applied on the analog signal okay time division multiplexing is for the digital signals fine these are the three methods let's see the first one that is uh, frequency division multiplexing fine so uh, as i said it is one of the method and it can be applied on analog signal right so uh, see there is a situation when you can apply this frequency division that is uh, it can be applied only i mean it can be applied when the bandwidth of the link the link is is what this one link okay so if the bandwidth of the link is greater than combined bandwidth of the signal to be transmitted okay so if the bandwidth of this link is greater than the combined bandwidth of the signals to be transmitted then you can apply frequency Uh, division multiplexing okay so so let's uh, go to that particular slide okay uh, in that case you can use frequency division multiplexing here in fdm that is frequency division multiplexing signals generated by each sending device modulate different carrier frequencies See, in the last chapter we studied what is car carrier signal or carrier frequency right so what it does uh, see when sending device produces a high frequency signal then this high frequency signal is the base for the information okay and this base signal is called as carrier frequency or you can call it as carrier signal okay see I, i understand the topic is difficult so that's why i'm going very slow please do concentrate fine 
see frequency division multiplexing as i said it can be applied when the bandwidth of the link is greater than the combined bandwidth of the signal to be transmitted okay so here in this uh, fdm signals when signals are generated by each sending device you have to modulate it then it leads to different carrier frequencies okay so what it says is the uh, the consider at this end there are sending device which sends the signal it has to be modulate with the help of multiplexer then whatever it generates at the modulator whatever uh, it generates output of this we call it as carrier frequencies okay so uh, please do remember uh, after model applying multiplexer uh, it generates carrier frequencies we'll see this in the next slide fine as of now you just uh, do remember this part fine so this mod i mean after uh, i mean modulated signals after performing multiplexer okay uh, these carrier frequencies are combined into single uh, you can say into composite single that can be transmitted over the link transport that can be transmitted over the link uh, that is established between the sender and the receiver okay so you have to remember this sending devices sends the signal which is modul which is given as input for the modulator which generates carrier frequencies okay and these different carrier frequencies are combined and forms a single composite single uh, signal which can be transmitted or which is transmitted over the link i'll just repeat sending device will send the signal to the modulator which generates different carrier frequencies these different carrier frequencies are combined and forms a single composite signal which is transmitted over the link okay and the same will be delivered at the receiver end okay now you can see here sorry ha huh, see the uh, composite signal will be sent over this link as i said right so this link is you can see is classified or divided as number of channels so in this diagram you can see this one link is Uh, divided as three channels okay so between this three channels uh, there is a line here right channel after channel 1 you can see the line after channel 2 you can see a line after uh, yeah so these lines or strips uh, is called as god bands okay do remember this chan this one link this three whatever the three partitions you are seeing this all together we call it as a a link okay in this link multiple channels are present and each channel is separated by a bandwidth that we call it as guard bands g u a r d guard bands now now what is the purpose of using guard bands this guard bands prevent signals from overlapping see this one channel carries set of signals channel 2 carries another set of signals channel 3 carries another set of signals okay so these signals that is which are there in the channel 1 should not overlap with the signal uh, that carries at the channel 2 okay to solve this problem guard bands are used guard bands are nothing but bandwidth okay so to uh, stop that overlapping the guard bands are used i have taken one more diagram from the from the internet this will clear your doubt see here these are the sending devices which sends the signal and given as input to the multiplex uh, multiplexer or you can say modulator this generates different carrier frequencies that will be combined into single composite signal and then that will be transmitted over this link okay the same is delivered at the receiver end and it it separates each signal okay so now you can see here this link
consists of three channels. In between each channel, the guard band is present, which stops the overlapping of signals to uh, which uh, transmitted over each channel. Okay. So if you look at this diagram, you are please understand there is one link available with different channels. Each channel is uh, separated by guard bands. Uh, in this uh, diagram, you also can make out that if there are three channels, the guard band will be uh, guard band present here is two. So the number of guard bands present in frequency division multiplexing is always one less than the number of channels that is present in the link. Okay, this data you should remember to solve the problem. Okay, I'll repeat. The guard band is always one lesser than the number of channels present in the link with respect to frequency division multiplexing. Okay, so here you see frequency 1, frequency 2, frequency 3, frequency 4. So this each frequency is separated by guard bands. Okay, so this from this point to this point, it is the overall bandwidth of the communication link. Fine. So this diagram is not there in the textbook, but I have just included it for the understanding purpose. Okay. Next, this is about the frequency division multiplexing. See, as I said, in this here, the modulator will be present, which generates uh, different carrier frequencies, right? So now we'll see how it is done. So that we call it as multiplexing process. Here you can see three different frequencies or you can see three different uh, analog signals which are generated from different uh, sending devices. So these analog signal are, are streamed at, are given as input to the modulator, okay? Uh, this modulator uh, converts this analog signal into carrier frequencies. So there are three input signals here. So three uh, carrier frequencies are generated with the help of modulator. So this all together we call it as multiplexing process. Okay, carrier frequency one, carrier frequency two, carrier frequency three. Okay, this uh, generates uh, carrier frequencies and you can see the, the frequ carrier frequency one is represented this way, carrier frequency two is represented this way and carrier uh, frequency three is represented this way. And all this, these three carrier frequencies are combined, combined together and it forms a single composite signal. So this is what happens at the sender side when multiplexing process uh, when multiplexing process happens. Okay, the signal will be converted into carrier frequencies, and then that will be combined, and it will form the uh, single composite signal that will be transmitted over the transmission link. Okay, now uh, this when this signal is delivered at the receiver end. What happens at the receiver side, uh, what the filters will be present, okay? This will be fed to the filters here, okay? With this will, what, what, is, what it, it will do? It will again convert it into carrier frequencies and again given to the demodulator present at the receiver end and again it will generate the respective analog signal, okay? So at the sender side, multiplexing happens. At the receiver side, demultiplexing happens. In, de uh, in demultiplexing, what happens? Uh, it uses series of filters, right? And it decomposes. You can see here, it will decompose uh, the multiplex signal into component signal. See, composite signal is uh, filtered out and it forms the component signals, right? So, and this then, sorry, and then the individual signals pass to the demodulator. This will separate them from their carriers and pass them to the 
output lines okay this is what happens at the demultiplexing process fine right? so that all together uh, frequency division multiplexing so just uh, for the understanding purpose there is an example is given where you can see three voice lines are there or telephone lines and it has a bandwidth of uh, four that is each vo voice calls has bandwidth of four which is given as input to the modulator okay and then it has to be transmitted over the uh, transmission link right so each has four uh, what four uh, uh, i mean uh, bandwidth has four kilobyte sorry uh, you can say mbps or kilohertz okay in this example they have can they have represented or expressed bandwidth in the form of kilohertz fine here you can see each voice call has uh, what uh, bandwidth has 4 kilohertz it is represented in this diagram right so the first it is given to the modulator so all together this is 4 this is 4 this is 4 right so all together when you want to transmit this these voice calls over the transmission link you need 4 plus 4 plus 4 you need 12 kilohertz of uh, bandwidth to transmit these voice calls to the destination right so that's why once it is modulated it generates carrier frequency say they have considered from 20 to 24 uh, for the second one from 24 to 28 for third one it is 28 to 32 so this is carrier frequency then it is combined and then passed over transmitted over the communication link and then delivered at the receiver side where the filter will uh, separates uh, this com uh, composite signal into uh, component signals and then uh, what uh, it separates their carriers and pass them to the output lines okay this is one simple example there is a problem given here under this topic okay so let's see uh, there are five channels okay each with 100 kilohertz bandwidth there are five channels each with 100 kilohertz bandwidth are uh, to be uh, these channel has to be multiplexed together okay this is the given question now the question is what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channels to prevent interference so you have to find out what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a guard band of 10 kilohertz okay so you can see in this problem five channels each with 100 kilohertz so all together how much bandwidth it require to transmit the signal one channel is 100 kilohertz right so five channels in five channels it says Five multiply hundred kilohertz by five, so that is the total bandwidth for the link now. Okay, then what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is need for a guard band? See, if there are five channels, then how many uh, guard bands will be present? As I said in the theory part, if there are uh, five channels, then guard band required is four. Always one less than the a uh, number of channels for the link right so let's see that oh i just wanted to show this one first so there are five channels here consider uh, i got this image so consider there are uh, five channels okay each each channel will be uh, of uh, 100 kilohertz okay and this guard band will be of 10 kilohertz okay now you need to know what is the minimum bandwidth of this link see it is the problem is solved here for five channels we need at least four guard bands right so this means that required bandwidth is five channels multiplied by 100 kilohertz bandwidth plus four guard bands multiplied with 10 kilohertz so if you multiply this 
uh, you will get answer is 540 kilohertz that will be the minimum bandwidth of the link for this uh, given data okay the simple problem but you should understand the problem uh, given data well fine so that is about the problem very simple problem but it is asked once in the question i mean in the exam so next is application of uh, this analog carrier system okay so this is uh, this is what uh, they follow in the telephone network see to make calls uh, whatever the landline when we were using okay so this is uh, this is the uh, infrastructure that is followed to connect uh, the landlines between the uh, cities or the districts okay this is the hierarchical system used by the telephone companies as you can see here uh, this hierarchy or the infrastructure uh, has groups super groups right and master group and then jumbo groups so this is the infrastructure followed for the telephone companies okay so as you can see in this hierarchy uh, initially they have given Uh, see this is only for the understanding purpose they given i mean uh, to understand the application of fdm okay so the what it is given in this uh, image there are 12 voice channels so uh, what is the input uh, lines that is 12 and each of each line or the channel has 4 kilohertz bandwidth fine so 12 voice channels are at the first stage given as input where multiplexing happens because it is given as uh, fdm right multiplexing and demultiplexing happens at this stage okay so it is a hierarchy right the, the process happens at different stage so this 12 voice channels okay each of which 4 kilohertz are multiplexed onto the higher bandwidth Uh, i mean higher bandwidth link to create a group so it is multiplexed and it forms a group okay and then it is uh, i mean then it is passed to the next level in the hierarchy fine so now here at the next level uh, see you can see here 12 voice channels so what is the bandwidth of this link 12 into 4 how much it is 48 kilohertz okay so for the next whatever the group is created here i mean output of this will have the bandwidth of 48 kilohertz how it is 48 here the given uh, voice channels are 12 and each one of it has uh, the bandwidth as sorry each channel has bandwidth of 4 kilohertz right multiply it so it is 12 into 4 is 4 kilohertz that is what happens at this uh, i mean at the first level next level is what uh, here you can see here at the next level up to five groups so you can see here up five groups are formed five groups can be multiplexed to create a composite uh, or composite signal called a super group so here at this stage again five groups are combined and it forms a composite signal that output of this we call it as super groups okay so now what is the bandwidth of this uh, this signal uh, this link now multiply this uh, what uh, 48 into 2 so that comes to 240 kilohertz right so this is uh, this is the next level okay and then what happens this super group has bandwidth of 240 kilohertz and so as you can see here it supports 60 voice channels right and then at next level what happens uh, 10 subgroups here 10 subgroups are considered okay and these are multiplexed to create a master group okay first it forms the group and then it forms super group and then it forms master group okay so now you can see here uh, what is the uh, what uh, uh, bandwidth of this 
it is 240 right next what is the bandwidth of this it it should be actually 2.40 when the master group is created but the uh, calculation i mean uh, here it is 2.52 why is that so it has to be actually 2.40 because 10 super groups are there right so 10 multiply by 240 kilohertz so so in that case it should be 2.40 megahertz but it is 2.52 megahertz why because see at this place the guard bands will be considered okay so that's why that guard band bandwidth is added here okay in next channel in the next level what happens this master group uh, is combined six master group is combined and then uh, forms a co composite signal and then passed over the link that we call it as jumbo group okay so now you multiply 2.52 megahertz into 6 so that comes to uh, actually 15.12 uh, megahertz but it is 16.984 megahertz because again the guard band bandwidth will be included okay this is the hierarchy that is followed uh, what that is followed at this uh, telephone company okay i hope uh, this is clear to everyone first it forms the group then super group and then master group and then jumbo group fine so other application is uh, am and uh, fm radio it is used in uh, radio broadcasting and next television broadcasting and third one in the first generation of cellular telephone so these are the different application of Frequency division multiplexing. Fine. Yeah. So.